Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at none other than the Flashpoint Doomsday Reveler aka Toy Zero's version of Jared Leto's Nightmare Joker from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now for those of you who've been watching the channel for an extended period of time, you'll know I love my DCEU films, specifically that Snyder Cut. I've watched it a bunch of times, so yeah, I was super excited to get this guy in. Now don't forget, he's third party, he's unlicensed, he's an unofficial product. I picked up mine from Comic Sanctorum. I've popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and it's relatively straightforward. The Doomsday Reveler up on top, the Luxury Edition sticker down below because this version comes with two head sculpts, a Flashpoint logo on the side and of course some legal information on the back. Now Toys Era from time to time include these cardboard magnetic front covers which can actually double as a backdrop. This one is relatively simple. I would have loved to have seen the hellscape of the Nightmare Universe, but unfortunately we got a pretty straightforward concrete wall. Now the Joker himself does, as I said, come with two head sculpts. I haven't decided which of the two I'm going to go with in my display, but it appears as though he comes wearing the rooted hair sculpt. I will try to tame this hair before we take a closer look. But first, in-hand impressions are very positive. I'm loving the weathered, disheveled look of his robes. Now of course there is one tray up on top and another down below. So what we are going to do now is get all of Joker's accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look and everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, it is super simple. It's literally a concrete style flooring up on top with the Joker Jester on the front. I am so glad they did this rather than printing the Doomsday Reveler. Please Toy Zero, going forward just use a logo, it's a lot more classy. We also have a regular crotch grabber up on top. Now one thing that I didn't know he was going to come with is this, a one to one scale version of the playing card that Joker offers to Batman. It's a super nice touch and again, going forward. One to one scale props are a really nice and simple addition, specifically when they're literally just a playing card. So if that's something new that Toys Era is going to do, then I'm all for it. You also get a surgical mask which is absolutely filthy. You can see it's in tatters, there's dirt and grime on the surface, and you do have two strings on either side that you tie up to have him either wearing it or have it around his neck. You also get the police vest, and it is accurate to the one that you see him wearing in the movie. You can see SWAT, Gotham City Police, various different pouches, and magazines which can be removed. You also have a ton of police badges, which probably are police officers that Joker has unfortunately dispatched of, but I love the rusted effect plus the dirt and grime and the blood over the top. Now yes you will see him wearing this later on in the video. You also get the thorned crown which was shown in some promotional images taken by Zack Snyder but unfortunately we never saw it in the movie. You also get what I believe to be an M4. He does have a sight up on top, you can remove the magazine, but in one of the weirdest turns you can also remove this section which has a bullet in the bottom. Now I'm by no means a gun aficionado, but I'm pretty sure there is nothing that's supposed to go in the regular grip. This is the only magazine. So yeah, I was a little bit perplexed. You also have a single point sling that you do have to attach up the top there. Lastly for the weapons, you get his 
purple and gold 1911. Very Joker. You can also remove the magazine here, and there is some painted bullet detail. This is pretty much identical to the one that we got with the Hot Toys Suicide Squad Joker. You also get a couple of rubber glove wearing hands, and I do love the texture, just like you'd expect out of real dishwashing gloves. They're also rather rubbery, so they are relatively easy to pop on to the body. You also get a tiny version of the larger Joker playing card, so you can have him, of course, having it in between his fingers and handing it off to Batman, a very iconic moment in the Justice League movie. Lastly, however, you do get this piece as well as two head sculpts. This is, of course, the Justice League cowl. Now, Weta Workshop are making a quarter-scale statue of Nightmare Joker, and he is holding up this cowl, so technically, if you wanted to recreate that pose, you could totally do that. It's a rubbery-style plastic, it is hollow, so you can have him holding it quite easily, and it's completely disheveled. It's very dirty and grimy. However, I'm pretty sure y'all do want to see both head sculpts. Now, I do have a preference, and showing them off the body like this doesn't really show them in the best light possible, so when we pop them on, I think they'll look slightly better. Now, starting off with the rooted head sculpt first, the skin texture definitely is there, but the white paint is a little bit too thick, so it hides it. I wouldn't have minded if they'd spent a little bit longer getting the painting process down pat, because that's the one thing that I feel lets this figure down ever so slightly. The hair actually surprisingly looks great. There's a gradient to it, it's not just all one flat colour, and if you spend some time working with it, I reckon you could get it looking fairly decent. But my favourite out of the two is the sculpted hair version. His hair is slicked back, there is a gradient once again to this, and there happens to be a small piece of rooted hair on the side, so if you wanted to, you can mess around with it and get it sort of floating off in the wind. I also like the expression here. It's for that moment where he's handing the card to Batman. He's got a very shiny silver look to the grill in his mouth there, and the eyes are painted fairly well. They aren't perfect. The Hot Toys Joker head sculpts are far better, obviously, as you'd expect, but overall, yes, I still really do like these sculpts. What we are going to do now, though, is get the Joker himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him, standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, and for the most part, yeah, it does what it says in the tin. It's a nightmare version of Joker. Luckily, this outfit is pretty straightforward. They just have to nail the fit, which I think they've done. It hugs the body where it's supposed to, the sleeves aren't too long, the pants aren't too short, everything looks about right. Then over the top of that, there's a ton of weathering which really does bring this guy to life. I was worried because Toys Era can be very hit and miss, but I think this guy is more hit than miss. Do let me know if you agree though down below. What we are gonna do next is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now in just a second, we will swap out the head sculpt and pop on the police vest, because I'm really curious to see the look fully completed. But for those of you who want to pose him like this, because he did look like this in the promo pics that Zack Snyder revealed on his Vero account, then yeah, you can totally do that. But for me, I want to go all out with my Nightmare Joker. Now I know, we've already discussed the head sculpts, and you all know how I feel about rooted hair. But on the body, it actually does work. The hair is still very wild, but hey, maybe you like it to look that way. This is, after all, a doomsday situation, so he's not going to have time to style his hair. But if you wanted to, you can get some product and hopefully tame it down. I've also popped the crown on the top of his noggin, which does help keep everything in place. So this is potentially a look that I could see myself using in the display. Now moving down to the robes, 
These are very nicely weathered. They could have totally cheaped out and made these pristine white, but they didn't. There are multiple passes of brown and black paint over the seams and the high traffic areas where you'd expect them to be, specifically down here on his sleeves. They are filthy. This side is even all torn up, which, yeah, I'm all for it adds to the overall look. It's wrinkled, it's dirty, and it's nasty. I mean, look at the bottom of this outer robe. It's disheveled, and that fits perfectly. Now, coming down to his pants, these are also rather filthy. His shoes are potentially a little bit clean, but if you wanted to, you could totally go in with some brown and black paint and make them look even dirtier. There isn't much in the way of sculpting on the underside, but there is still a little bit of detail. On the back, you have these various ties. I guess if you wanted to take this off and modify it a little bit, yeah, you could totally do that. But for those of you wondering what the completed look looks like... And here you have the final look fully assembled, and I absolutely love how this comes together. The police vest isn't too big, it's not too bulky, it fits perfectly. There are some clips on the side and some velcro, you simply slide it over the top and connect everything up and it sits the way it's supposed to. You do have the surgical mask which I've tied around his neck and then the sculpted hair head sculpt. Now it does sit rather high because the hair does kind of sit down and push against his neck. If you wanted to use the other one though with the rooted hair it does sit slightly lower. Overall, this is my favourite look for this version of Joker, and I'll absolutely be popping him in the display in a pose holding the Joker card, very similar to this. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Hot Toys Nightmare Batman and the Flashpoint Nightmare Joker. And oh yes, this makes me so very happy. I love the Nightmare Universe, it was one of my favourite things about Zack Snyder's vision and I wanted to see more. I'm super glad that we did get to see that in the Snyder Cut, but I kind of wanted even more than what we got. Either way, now I can have these two displayed with the rest of the Justice League in the collection. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I've also taken the liberty of leaving the vest off just to show you the fullest range of motion possible. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a magnet, which you all know I absolutely love, but the neck is also on a ball joint. So going forward and back you get a ton of range, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up the full way and they are on soft ratchets. They will of course go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder, swivel at the upper bicep, a double bend at the elbow, and of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward and back, swivel, then pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend on soft ratchets at the knee, and lastly a ball joint down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the Flashpoint Doomsday Reveler, aka the Nightmare Joker from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Going into this I was really excited but a little bit nervous because my expectations were so high. Did he meet or exceed them? Yes, for the most part I think he met them. He's not 100% perfect, there are some things that I would have liked to have seen them spend a little bit longer on, potentially the paint applications on the head sculpt, but for the most part I'm still very satisfied. The accessories are awesome, the robes are very well done, and the fact that if you get the deluxe version you get two head sculpts, that means you can make your choice, which of the two do you prefer, sculpted or rooted hair. Now if you do sit down and spend a little bit of time working with the rooted hair head sculpt, then yes, you can totally get it to look awesome. But for me, 
I will be going with the sculpted hair option in the display. I like the crazier, zanier expression, and I think it works for the nightmare scene. Now, there are other companies making this version of Nightmare Joker, so when they come out, I'll pick them up and then we'll do the requisite comparisons. Now, if you are looking to grab this, I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, but do bear in mind it's third party, it's unlicensed, this is an unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. While you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.